Hello, I'm Karma Kitai, and I'm your host for A Livelihood, New Adventures as We Age. And I interview people over age 50 who have started anything new and fun and challenging in their middle to later years. Today I'm going to introduce you to Dennis Livingston, who has made several different career changes. So, welcome Dennis. Oh, thanks. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you're here too. So we're going to talk about your life story in bullet points, I think, today. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, and I know that, well, we certainly are going to talk a lot about your musical career, but that's your latest career. That's right. And you started years ago at being a professor in political science, right? That's right. I am a lapsed uh, political scientist <laughs> at this point. <laughs> But I did, yes, that was my first profession, got a, a degree in that uh, field, and um, became a teacher specializing in international relations, and related subjects, uh -huh. at various schools around the country. So when you were in the political science department, you right. taught a course on future studies. Well, I developed this. this is, now we're talking about uh, somewhere in the mid to late 60s and into the 70s. Yeah, when uh, you might remember this uh, author, Alvin Toffler, published a book called Future yeah. Shock, which is yeah, still yeah. a phrase well known. I mean, he really mm -hmm. hit the mark and alerted a lot of people that we, um, well, there's culture shock, you know, there's all sorts of shocks, but that the future, you know, the, the rate of change is, has become ex accelerated in, in, in the 20th century to a degree that we now feel it, that the life you led when you were growing up is not, the, in fact, likely to be the life you lead later. Uh, for all sorts of reasons. So when that book came out, it became respectable in a way to think about and talk about where are we going and how do we know any of that. There were tools for doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it was like the, go you know, the golden rainbow opened and I could step over into Oz because now uh, talking about science fiction itself became also respectable. <laughs> So what made you leave academia? <laughs> well, they left me. Uh, <laughs> it was... Uh, Partly, <laughs> you might say I talked myself into uh, or worked myself into not, you know, I wasn't being a traditional kind of academic in my interests or my writing. Mm -hmm. And I tried to also be innovative in teaching. You know, it wasn't all going to be lectures the way, the way I was taught and most of us were. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have students participating. I wanted to have guest speakers and take field trips, especially when I got into courses like... Uh, uh, Alternate World Futures was one of them, and Utopias, Dystopias was another. I was trying to the boundary, get, out, get away from the boundary between the classroom and the outside world. It was obvious I wasn't going to get tenure and didn't, and, and so I decided time to get out. So make first life change. What do I do? Uh, well, political science, you know, I, I know something about policy. I, was, I could write good English, so uh, that's what took me to Boston. Uh, uh, by then I was divorced, but the, uh, my child, our child was here with her mother, so I think, well, I want to be closer uh, to that, you know, have something of a family and easier to visit. So uh, I looked around for a job. Amazingly, yes, I found an ad for a job at the, uh, with the state government here in, 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 in Boston, mm -hmm. uh, being a policy analyst for um, uh, the anti-poverty program we had then. It had different names, but that's what it was about. And the, next, the next stage would be uh, uh, that I was always interested in technology from that sci-fi background. So here's mm -hmm. the connections start to come. And computers are now in the, um, we're into the mid 80s, were uh, uh, important to businesses and mm -hmm. starting to come into the home. They had in, in this state, this region, the 128 you know, belt uh, they talk about, uh, had a, a whole bunch here of... Here in Massachusetts. Yes, right here. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mid-range computer companies. So um, I figured it's just some way I can attach myself. I didn't know a thing about computers, mm -hmm. certainly technically, and, and I was just barely starting to get acquainted with using them myself. Um, mm -hmm. But... Um, what I learned <laughs> in looking around is that Boston was also had uh, a center of, uh, they had a very large publishing company called Connors. They too were advertising. I said, well, what is that world about? They were publishing trade magazines. 
as you may know, is uh, those are magazines that are sold um, to subscribers. So uh, they had one called uh, Systems Integration, and they said, hmm, sounds interesting. <laughs> what does What's that, that mean? mean? Right. <laughs> and, and, you know, but of course I did some research, looked up, and it's, it was big, and still is an important field. I mean, if, if you're a, a, a company and you have uh, computers from different company, uh, different other companies, computer companies, as many do, you have to find a way, they have to work together. They've mm -hmm. got to be integrated. So that was, I was really in some ways over my head, but what the company mm -hmm. hired me because they knew, they wanted somebody who could explain clearly uh, how this kind of work was being mm -hmm. done, who was doing so it. So were you writing for the lay person then? Or? More for uh, well, technical. it's the business person, not necessarily the ones in the information departments. Mm -hmm. So uh, the magazine folded, but now I had a resume as, as a writer in that world, and so mm -hmm. I could do some freelance writing. So I did that for a while, and now we're ready for the next jump. So I know that you come from an illustrious musical family. Right. My, my father, Jerry Livingston, uh, was... Um, and I, I'd like to think in some circles still is, a, a well-known uh, songwriter mm -hmm. uh, from the uh, So you grew up with music era. from day one then, huh? Yes. You got into music so yourself I, so after all these in, other careers. We are now skipping, <laughs> right, from the 50s to 60s, right. So I go in other directions because I was more of an intellectual, right, that was, and mm -hmm. the scholarly type. But I was always musical, yes, was always part of my life, but not his music. Mm -hmm. I was the classical music. Mm. Um, snob, and mm -hmm. I love that stuff, and especially uh, 20th century music, I was into that. So mm -hmm. my, I had piano lessons, but my main instrument was flute, mm -hmm. and so that followed me, and I still play it through, through all the years in co high right. school and college bands and so on. Yeah. Now I like to improvise with jazz and, and uh, sort of pick up mm -hmm. uh, music groups. At some point you started composing so what, yes, your well, own Yes, what music. happens in, by the... Now, in the early 90s, uh, I inherit his copyrights uh, to the songs he wrote. Uh, like, many compo like many songwriters, uh, they often set up their own sort of family publishing companies. So that's what I got. And then so I decided, okay, I can run this company. I found there are ways you can be a one-person music company uh, mm -hmm. and because there are organizations to help with that. Right. Uh, and then somewhere in there, Karen... <laughs> it says, you know, she's always, I was always noodling at the piano through my life, and especially mm -hmm. with, and she says, you know, mm, maybe you should try writing some songs. Well, I had done that, actually, as a teenager, but never picked it up. So mm -hmm. the, the, the big transition came when, when a, a friend of ours who was a grade school teacher said, you know, there's so few original good musicals for young kids in the lower grades to mm -hmm. sing and perform. And so I said, what would be fun? What would the kids like? dinosaurs. <laughs> I said, oh, can't lose. Little did I know. Well, in any case, kids do love dinosaurs. And so I researched for a few months on that. That's what uh -huh. I love doing. And decided, okay, I'm going to write a one-hour children's musical mm. that focuses on dinosaurs. I said, well, what? So I came up with a, with a plot, you know, mm. doing the whole thing, book, music, lyrics, about how dinosaurs might have experienced the, their extinction 65 million years ago. I said, we're going to have to end the show with your song. Oh, good. In Boston, winter has many attractions. Skiing, ice skating, and such. Yeah. Then they're shoveling driveways and skidding on highways. It all gets to be a bit much. Frankly, as the cold unfolds, here's what I'd say. Nothing becomes winter more than when you see it melt away. Summer fling. 